Okay, so in the previous video we talked about this uh, idea that there's a difference between the uh, multi-electron energy uh, of the orbitals versus the one electron systems, right? And in fact I was telling you that you can use this little diagram here uh, to think about how to build up the energy of the electrons from the lowest energy orbital possible, which is the 1s, all the way to the highest energy orbital uh, that we have uh, uh, in the periodic table which is the 6d orbital and we actually it'd be instructive for us to take a look at the two um, different systems the two systems we talk about the one electron atom and the multi electron atom and what you can see is that if you were to make calculations of the energies of these electrons okay uh, of these orbitals in these two different systems you notice that when you have the multi electron atom uh, the 1s orbital is actually lower in energy in comparison to the 1s orbital in the one electron atom and the reason for this is uh, generally has to do with the uh, has to do with with the uh, Z or the uh, atomic number of the multi electron atom but also uh, there's some uh, you know structural uh, considerations that you have to take into account in terms of the types of electrons that you have but also what you notice is that when you go to the second level which in the one electron system the, the, there are two orbitals there, the 2s and the 2p in terms of types of orbitals but both of these orbitals have the same energy right there's all degenerate but when you're talking about the multi electron system then the 2s uh, orbital is lower in energy in comparison to the 2p orbital and this is of course due to the effect of uh, electron penetration and or orbital penetration and so on. As you go to the third level, you notice that the 3s and 3p have different energies, uh, and the 3d is even higher in energy. Whereas in the one electron system, the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d all have the same energy. They're all degenerate. Okay. So this is an important uh, difference between the two different systems. And of course, what we're interested in is the multi-electron system. But it's useful to look at the one electron system because that's how we get. Uh, the basic equation to apply to the multi-electron system. Now the last concept I want to talk about as far as energy of the uh, one electron versus the polyelectronic system is the actual energy calculation. So we actually did some of these energy calculation before for the one electron system when we talk about the Bohr model of the uh, hydrogen atom because in the Bohr model we use this equation to make calculations of energy. Uh, of the hydrogen atom uh, for that electron in various uh, n levels, right? So now we're going to apply this uh, in the context of quantum mechanics. So for a one electron system, of course, the energy is just given by this equation. And remember that E is uh, something we refer to as the binding energy, okay? And why, why, why do we call it the binding energy? Well, it's because it's the energy that binds the electron to the nucleus, right? So that makes the electron stays in the atom. So that's why it's called the binding energy. So E is the binding energy and that's equal to negative of the Rydberg constant times this factor here which is Z squared over N squared. Okay? Z being the atomic number, number of protons, and N being the principal quantum number. For a polyelectronic system, we have these two factors that make a difference. One is shielding and the other one is orbital penetration. As a result of this, right, because shielding and orbital penetration affect basically the charge that's experienced by an electron, okay? So let me just quickly review those again. In shielding, the issue we have here is that the valence electron is uh, the, the charge of the nucleus that the valence electron experiences is less than what it would have experienced if there's no electrons that are um, interfering or blocking, you can think of it that way, although it's not really that way, but you can think about it in the sense that there's, if there's no electron that's blocking the interaction of the valence electron with the uh, nucleus, it would have experienced a charge of plus three. But because of these two electrons canceling out the effect of the uh, charge on the nucleus, you can think that in the extreme example, the valence electron here is only going to experience a plus one um, charge okay so the effect of shielding is you know basically decreasing the z right the z 
or the uh, nuclear charge that this electron is experiencing. So then effectively, in fact I wrote it here, the effective nuclear charge that this electron is experiencing is only plus one uh, when the actual Z is actually plus three. Okay, That's because of shielding. But remember that we also have to consider penetration because it depends on what where the valence electron is located. Okay, If the valence electron is located in a 2s orbital versus a 2p orbital, if the electron is in a 2s orbital, it will be slightly more stable than if the electron is located in a 2p orbital. So as a result, the Z effective, okay, which is the effective nuclear charge that is felt by a uh, valence electron is dependent on both of these factors, dependent on the shielding that the valence electron experiences as well as the amount of orbital penetration that the electron can uh, ha that can happen to the electron. So in other words you have to rewrite the equation for the binding energy for a multi-electron atom the following way you're gonna write it then the only change here as you can see between this one electron system and that one is the fact that instead of Z we're gonna use Z effective and what's the difference well Z effective is a function of shielding and penetration both okay and shielding and penetration depends on not just N okay it doesn't just depend on N which is the principal quantum number but it also depends on L the angular momentum quantum number. It depends on what kind of orbitals the electron is located in because an s orbital can penetrate more than a p orbital. A p orbital can penetrate more than a d orbital. So the value of z effective is always going to be less than z, right? Z is the actual atomic number. Z effective is going to be less than that. But how much less is something that we have to determine, okay? And so the other thing I want to point out is that you want to remember that the binding energy is the energy that holds the electron to the atom, okay? Now, at some point, if the energy keeps going up higher and higher and higher and higher, at some point when the binding energy is equal to zero, the amount of energy it takes to completely rip, uh, basically rip off the electron from the atom is, of course, what we refer to as the ionization energy. Remember that this was the concept we actually discussed when we talk about the photoelectric effect. Remember that in the photoelectric effect, we talk about the idea that light can ionize an electron from a metal uh, by, you know, if you're shining the light with the appropriate frequency, you can actually ionize the uh, electron from the metal. And so the binding energy is the amount of energy that's holding that electron. So the ionization energy is the energy needed to take out the electron from the atom. So then the ionization energy is just the opposite of the binding energy. Okay, And of course, the ionization energy is also what we call the work function in the photoelectric effect. So you want to be able to uh, think about these terms, all, you know, all these terms, uh, and have them clear in your head. Because really the value is the same, but they're just defined in terms of opposite processes. So let's take a look at this uh, calculation here. You can actually calculate the Z effective as a result of this relationship between the binding energy and the, and the ionization energy. You can calculate value of Z effective from photoelectric effect measurements of ionization energy. How is that? Well, remember, I just said here that the ionization energy is the opposite of the binding energy. So if the binding energy looks like this, and the ionization energy is the opposite of this, that just means that ionization energy is negative of the binding energy. Now, the binding energy is this, so the negative of this expression is basically just RH Z effective squared over N squared. And that's what I wrote here, okay? So if you notice, basically the ionization energy is just equal to this expression. And this is useful because the ionization energy is something we can measure, right? We can measure it through the photoelectric effect measurement, for example. So if we get a number for ionization energy, that allows us to calculate what Z effective is because we know RH and we also know that the easiest electron to pop off from an atom is the valence electron. So we then know what the N value is for that particular electron. So 
In order to calculate z effective, I just need to rearrange this equation, which is IE equals this, to solve for z effective. And if you do that, then you should get this form of the equation. z effective should be equal to the square root of n square, n being the principal quantum number level of the valence electron, ionization energy over the Rydberg constant in the energy form. All right, let's apply that uh, equation now to this problem right here. And the problem is fairly straightforward. Basically just says calculate Z effective for the helium atom if the first ionization energy for this electron uh, is measured to be 3.94 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So we're going to start with the equation right here which is Z effective is equal to N squared IE uh, over RH. If you think about the helium atom which is the qu what the question is asking, in the helium atom okay in helium we have two electrons right uh, because it's the atomic number is two so if it's in the atom it has to have two electrons so because there's only two electrons both electrons can go to the first principal quantum number level in other words both of these electrons are 1s electrons right both in n equals 1 or 1s orbital okay I know that because the lowest energy orbital is 1s, uh, is in n equals 1, and there's only one uh, orbital available, which is 1s orbital, so both of these electrons can fit in there because that's allowed by quantum mechanical rules. So in other words, my n value here is 1. The electron is basically pulled out from one of the s orbitals. So if you think about it, there are two electrons in the 1s orbital. One of those electrons is ionized by light in this case using the photoelectric effect experiment and the ionization energy is given the question. So that allows you then to calculate the actual uh, Z effective, right? So I'm just going to put in numbers now. 1 for my uh, N value and I have to square that number uh, based on the formula and then my ionization energy in the question was given to be uh, 3.94 times 10 to the minus 18 okay joules and um, I then have my RH or my um, uh, Rydberg constant remember that that number is always the same which is 2.178 times 10 to the minus 18 joules okay and so the joules cancel as you can see so then you just have the uh, uh, numbers to calculate and take a square root of and if you do that, remember, notice that what you get here is a value of about 1.34, okay? Now that's interesting. So what that's saying is that the charge that the helium electron is uh, experiencing, okay, the charge that the, uh, the helium uh, electron, one of the helium electron is experiencing is about plus 1.34, okay? Now how much should what what kind of charge should the helium electron experiences well remember that in helium there's uh, two electrons because there's two uh, protons right the z okay not the z effective but the z in helium is plus two so what that's saying is that the electron actually because of electron electron uh, shielding only experiences 1.34 charge as opposed to plus 2 so it only experiences plus 1.34 and of course that's kind of what we expect right we expect some kind of shielding to kind of drop down this uh, charge that's being experienced so if you think about here's the positive 2 charge okay and let's say this is the n equals 1 level there's two electrons here there's one electron here and there's one electron here okay so the electron it turns out doesn't experience a plus 2 charge but it experiences only plus 1.34 so there is a reduction in terms of the charge and that's due to the shielding in this case primarily due to the shielding there's nothing else going on in this particular uh, system okay and so this is a, a, a you know a useful way for us to be able to quantify exactly how much shielding uh, an electron experiences in an atom so this is the end of our discussion on the energy of uh, orbitals. In the next segment, we're going to start talking about electron configuration and how we uh, use these energies to explain the properties of elements.